Vegetable oil eaters. Well, Troy said something about it, so I suppose I better say my experience about it. I can't help myself, so I've got to tell you about it. Now, what you're seeing here is the citronella lamp oil. You know, those things you light up to keep the mosquitoes away. The wick looks a bit strange, doesn't it? That's because it's a fiberglass wick. Here's another one with a skinnier wick. Now this one with a bigger wick, I mean, it's, it's quite a decent sized wick. Uh, that's my finger, little finger, next to it. It's quite big. So what have they got to do with vegetable oil heating? Well, I'm going to put a link to the description, uh, link in the description to a video um, called residual heat device. Now, the residual heat device itself is basically a tin. Yeah. I use this device to usually burn candles in it and it's a actually an old olive oil tin um, with holes drilled on the side for air to come through um, and a few little slots and two lids on top. Um, and the idea of having it in a olive oil tin was that if any wax spills out of the candles it captures that wax before it ends up on the floor. Also if the candles start to smoke there is um, basically the soot just hits the two lids I've got and doesn't stain the roof. But originally before I started using candles I used to use a citronella oil lamp, much the same as the second one I showed there, just a little bit shorter, um, and with a cotton wick, and I would fill it up with canola oil. Why is canola oil best? You don't really smell it the next day. If you use olive oil, you get a slight olive oil smell in the air. If you use canola oil, it doesn't seem to leave a smell behind. Um, you know, some other things like peanut oil, you may get a peanut smell. Uh, waste oil that they've used for fries, um, deep frying of, you know, fries. That, apparently according to people who drive biodiesel cars, you can smell the smell of fries when you're near the back of the car and the car's running. Um, you'll get that same smell if you use that oil. Uh, in your citronella oil lamp in your room. So I used to use canola oil because that keeps the smell of that. And the next question you're going to ask is, well, yeah, but what about the smoke? Well, it's to do with the height of the wick. Now, if your wick is very low, it won't smoke at all. If you pull it out real high, it will smoke. Problem solved, you just pull it down low. Yes, the flame is smaller, but then you don't end up with any smoke coming out. But I like to have that little lid on top just in case, because you get stupid things happen like moths fly into it and stuff like that on occasion. Um, the other thing is, I used to use a cloth one. Uh, those two I've just showed you, they will be used in the prototype. And why they're fiberglass ones? Well, cotton wicks actually do burn, and you lose a little bit of them sometimes if fiberglass ones don't. Um, so, you may say, is there an easy way I can do this as opposed to trimming wicks and then, you know, pulling them down and then hoping that it's not too high and then putting it out if it smokes and then go down a little bit lower? To get it right, often they've got to be down so low that they're almost ready to just fall right through the hole. So, what's your easy answer? kerosene lamp. Now if you've used kerosene lamps you'll know about the wick being up causing it to smoke and then you put it down and it is a smaller flame but it stops smoking. It's the same concept with the citronella oil lamps used to burn vegetable oil. Or you can just be real quick and instead of playing around trying to push the wick or pull it through the hole and all that business just go get yourself a kerosene lamp and use one of them, or three or four of them. 
and then just turn your little knob until you get it right uh, and it doesn't smoke. They are basically ready made. I don't recommend using old ones. Why? Because kerosene is a degreaser. If there's some, some still in the tank it may try and play shenanigans or, or do something with the vegetable you do pour in. Um, so you're better to just go and get a brand new one it's got no vegetable oil in it because we can get them here and, and like them like your sort of dollar stores we've got like these you know stores that sell Chinese junk and if you go into like the hardware section or the camping section you often find them and they're like five bucks each I haven't seen them for a while um, no actually I did yeah yeah I have I am still seeing them um, not all stores will have them but if you go to a few of those stores, there is always one um, with them there. Uh, but I could buy some real junk ones originally for five bucks each. Um, and you know, three or four of those and you'll be right. And that'll be that. But I'm a bit sus on using ones with kerosene in case the degreasing action of the kerosene starts messing with the um, vegetable oil that you pour in. Now, what about them being too hot? No big deal. It's only hot where the flame is. They don't light on the floor. I used to leave this thing sitting on the wood floor here. You know, yes, it is not varnished or anything like that. I wouldn't be doing it to save me life with carpet. But, you know, once again, half the reason I used to put it in the residual heat device, in the tin, was in case the bugger tipped over and leaked oil out, or because of the crap a Chinese manufacturer of some of these citronella oil lamps, that it may actually leak out of the seam. Whereas I knew for a fact that that old olive oil tin held oil real well. But I wasn't too sure about the Chinese-made citronella oil lamps. Um, but it's always good if they fall over um, that you've got the whole lot caught inside a metal container without it going on the floor and catching the floor or like catching a carpet light, anything like that. Uh, if you want to be safer, you go and get an old porcelain tile. Um, my parents have got them all through their house. They've got really big ones, almost a foot by foot, and they've got some spare ones of those so I can grab one of them and sit it on that. But you can get a couple of smaller tiles and, and sit it on that just to, you know, keep it off the ground. But generally they don't really get hot on the bottom or on the base of the residual heat device or the or the uh, kerosene lamp, from what I remember. It, it was just, there'd be heat above it. And, you know, you ain't really going to move heaven and earth with a tiny little flame but it'll keep the chill out of the air. Uh, it's very good for use in sort of autumn and, and sort of early spring and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's a little few little things on the uh, experiences I've had with using vegetable oil for heating. And it is actually quite cheap if you don't really want to heat the bejesus out of the joint, you know, if you just want to keep the chill out of the air. It's also very good for frost with um, greenhouses or you know plants that don't like real cold weather whack a few in the greenhouse overnight and keep the frost from killing your tomatoes or whatever in your greenhouse think about that too um, also maybe for chooks but you got to be very careful if you've got straw and that ran chooks and the whole lot of bloody go up um, but you know I, I thought I sort of think about you know a little chooks or rabbit in rabbit touches and stuff like that and you don't really want to go and light a whole wood stove for them you know, a wood heater so I think stuff like that would, would be alright for them um, so long as you're careful with the straw and, and all that business um, yeah.